So how many of you feel the sense of like, you read the newspaper, you look at the stuff about the junta, and, and you feel you know, this crisis. Everyone heard about the hashtag Crisis Island. That was actually kind of a nice spin on it. But in fact, we are kind of in a, we are in a crisis. We're in a fiscal crisis, we're in a governance crisis. If you look in the states, we're in even a bigger crisis. But I quote John F. Kennedy, he said, in a crisis, be aware of the danger, but recognize the opportunity. And it's interesting, he said that the Chinese, the symbol for crisis is actually two symbols in one. It's the symbol for danger, and it's also the symbol for opportunity. Every crisis brings an opportunity to rethink and reinvent yourself. So everyone knows the glass half full, the grass half empty, right? Those of us who see the glass half full, we're optimists, right? It can happen. Those who see it half empty, we're the pessimists. I say forget both of those things. The glass is refillable. And in fact, that's how we have to think. It's not about our attitude, it's about what we're willing to do. The person who sees the glass as uh, refillable is the person willing to take action. And I would say, as an island, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to rethink who we are. We need to take this crisis and choose it as an opportunity to reimagine what we might do. And we probably need to reset some of the rules and games by which we govern ourselves. And by doing that, we're really talking about putting innovation above replication. You see, as an island, we've been trained to be very great replicators. We're manufacturers. You give it to us, we will build it. We will build it well. But in this modern world, we need to be the innovators. See, we need to get away from thinking about making the box and making it perfectly to getting outside of it and coming up with the ideas. Because every modern Western economy is there. They're innovating. And these are the good jobs. You know, when people say we want to maintain, we want to maintain every job in Puerto Rico, well, do you want to maintain a job that pays $1 a day? Because that's what the Chinese can do that. We don't want to do that. So here's some things that maybe we could start thinking about. One is if we want to innovate, find a problem you have and fix it. Sometimes the best way to start innovating is to look at what your problems are and then own that problem like no one else has. You know, when they say like uh, startups, they tend to find something that bothers them and they go out and fix it. I give you this example. Uh, Israel is surrounded by countries that don't like them in a region of the world where water is becoming more and more scarce. So they said, we are going to become the innovators in how to desalinize water. No one had been able to figure out how to do it well enough that it was cost effective until Israel put their nation's mind to it. Today, 50% of Israel's drinking water comes from the sea, and they're able to produce it at a lower cost than getting bottled water, basically, right? They have innovated around a problem they have. It makes you wonder, we have a lot of problems. We got a lot of problems that are fairly unique to us that we could be innovating around. The second thing is use scarcity as inspiration. You know, they say scarcity is the mother of invention, right? And when there's less of something, which let's face it, there's gonna be a lot less money in Puerto Rico for a while. There's a lot less of things. Suddenly people get very focused on coming up with great solutions. Well, I give you a, a, a kind of a cute example from uh, Sweden. Sweden has actually, uh, in order to get people to just quit throwing things away and throwing it into their landfills and buying new things, and what they've done is they created a tax credit where if you get things repaired, it's actually a lot cheaper to get it repaired and half the labor cost of repairing big things can be written off in taxes. But it also means about <laughs> saving people. Uh, some designers from Silicon Valley went and found extreme poverty in Nepal, where children were dying of hypothermia, where in a Western country they would never do that. And they invented this, uh, this, this, uh, this like blanket heater that keeps children alive. But they invented around a nation that had scarcity. We have scarcity, we could do that. Number three, harness the talent of more people. We always seem to want like, you know, lately we've been talking about startups. We're like the startups, they can invent this and they can create this business, and that's good. But we need to get more people involved in our innovation. Let's face it, we've got highly talented people, but they don't think about innovation enough. Give me an example. Let's create a challenge around innovation. This is a challenge. The longitude challenge was created in the 1700s by the English Navy because they needed someone to invent a way in order to figure out how high up north or south ships were so they weren't losing ships anymore. They put out a 20,000 pound challenge in order for someone to come up with a solution. The person who came up with the solution, a clock maker, right? What, you know, there are these big challenges out in the world to deal with, uh, with antibiotics, to deal with extreme hunger, to deal with mining issues. 
You're telling me that our engineers in the UP Maya Wiz can't win so many challenges? The other thing is, what if we got more people in Puerto Rico involved in our challenges? Open IDEO is this platform that puts out a challenge and then it starts getting people all over the world to start giving their ideas and sharing their thoughts. What if we did that and we got people in Puerto Rico? If we got the diaspora of Puerto Rico involved in solving our, our, our challenges? The fourth thing is, what if we became a laboratory for the best in class policies? Puerto Rico is an island. We're a contained ecosystem. The United States always wants to test out new big policies in healthcare, in welfare. Well, you know what? We are your perfect laboratory dish. Send us the money. And we could come up with the ideas and the proof of how policies affect healthcare. Our healthcare system is a disaster right now. Can you imagine what a $1 billion grant might do if we were willing to test out how to make hospitals run better? Well, <coughs> I would tell you, if you think that we're too small to do all these things, Ireland, Singapore, Iceland, and New Zealand are all in the top 20 list of the 20 most innovative countries in the world. They did this. Most of them are our size and population. Right? These are islands of ideas, islands of invention, and we should be one of them too. So what I would say is we have to reinvent Puerto Rico. I love this quote. Sometimes you need a little crisis to help you realize your potential. And I think that's how we should see our crisis. Right now, it's an opportunity to, to clean the slate, to do the new thing, to reinvent ourselves. And maybe in five years' time, we're saying we're not the crisis. We're the example. Thank you. So that's the pecha cucha. That's how it works, right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>